12, 11, 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, go for main engine start, 2, 1, booster ignition, and liftoff of the space shuttle Discovery, returning to the space station, paving the way for future missions beyond. Thomas Reiter began the European Space Agency Astrolab mission on the 4th of July 2006. A public holiday in the United States and a special day for Thomas too, because Germany was approaching the semi-finals of the Football World Cup. The successful launch was greeted with relief because construction of the International Space Station, ISS, could go steadily ahead. All the measures that NASA had taken in recent years to improve the safety of their space shuttle fleet appeared to have been successful. It was two days from the launch to the rendezvous with the ISS and the crew had their hands full. Immediately before docking, the surface of the shuttle was photographed by the ISS crew in order to detect possible damage to the heat protection tiles. A few minutes after this exercise, the shuttle docked with the ISS. Houston and Alpha Discovery, capture confirmed. Pavel Vinogradov, ISS commander, and Jeff Williams, chief engineer, gave Thomas a warm welcome to his new home. After the short time in the narrow confines of the shuttle, the crew now had to get used to and explore the roomier environment of the ISS. It's about 60 meters from the American laboratory at the forward end to the Russian service module at the rear. Along the way, you pass through module node one, where the American airlock is docked. Next comes the adapter, which joins the American and Russian segments. The Russian-built Zarya module serves mainly as a storage facility for all the materials needed for life on board. The feeling of weightlessness is fantastic. Moving down the length of the ISS is a great way to enjoy it. Important parts of the life maintenance systems are located in the service module. The table at which meals are eaten, the bench at which the crew attend to their assigned daily tasks, and the toilet. And this is the door to Thomas's bedroom, which has an area of only 0.6 square meters. This small space, where a sleeping bag is fastened to the wall, can, however, be personalized a little with family pictures and other small items. The special thing about this room is the window and the wonderful view of the Earth and the horizon before falling asleep. The shuttle had brought in its cargo bay, the European-built Leonardo module, in which about four tons of supplies for the ISS were stowed. The module was docked with the ISS, and the first task of Thomas and the ISS crew was to transfer all these goods into the ISS. The Astrolab mission scientific program included about 20 experiments in the fields of human medicine, biology, and physics. It was Thomas's job to also carry out some NASA experiments, working with ground control in Huntsville in the United States and the Columbus Control Center in Oberpfaffenhofen, Germany. As well as spare parts and consumables, the shuttle brought up the ESA-built Melfi instrument, a deep freezer capable of cooling scientific probes to below 80 degrees Celsius, and the European Modular Cultivation System, a facility for conducting biological experiments. The crew installed all this equipment in the American laboratory and tested its proper functioning. The departure of a shuttle brings mixed feelings. On the one hand, those left behind look forward to their future life on board the ISS. And on the other hand, the people with whom they've been working very intensively over the past months are now leaving. Be that as it may, day-to-day -day life aboard the ISS now started, and Thomas Reiter reported to Earth from the station at regular intervals.
Without a doubt, one of the high points of a space mission are the extravehicular activities, or spacewalks. As the pressure in the spacesuit during a spacewalk is only about 30% of pressure at sea level, the astronauts have to breathe pure oxygen for a few hours before going outside. The spacesuits are true masterpieces of technology. Think of them as a small spacecraft. In fact, they contain all the systems, for example, in a Soyuz module, only in miniaturized form. The airlock is decidedly small and only provides space for two emus, as the American spacesuits are called. The opening of the exit hatch was the first hurdle which had to be overcome. Working outside means climbing around the outside of the station at a height of almost 400 kilometers at a speed of 27,000 kilometers per hour, an overpowering, almost indescribable feeling. This is the Missy 4 experiment that was just installed by astronaut Thomas Reiter. So let's see how that works with his camera. <laughs> A spacewalk like this is no walk in the park. Every movement carried out with hands or arms needs strength. The work went very well. Thomas and Jeff completed their tasks in somewhat less time than planned, and after some additional work that Mission Control in Houston gave them, they also had time to take some photographs. After just under six hours, the astronauts returned to the airlock. It would take a few days to digest the extraordinary things they'd seen and felt. As pleasant as weightlessness may seem in daily life, the side effects of muscle and bone wastage are far from pleasant. In order to combat these effects, and in particular to become accustomed to gravity again as soon as possible after landing, the astronauts need to complete an exercise program every day. Two exercise bikes, a running machine and a power trainer are available for this. Thomas trained on this equipment for one hour, twice a day, to keep himself fit. One of the scientific tasks Thomas had to carry out was the plasma crystal experiment where charged particles orient themselves freely as gravity does not disturb them. There are many applications of this new area of research, thanks to a better understanding of fundamental physical processes in solids, liquids and gases and even for designing fusion reactors of the future. A life science experiment looked at the mechanisms that play a role in the activation of our immune systems. Thomas exposed cell cultures to weightlessness and then to different speeds in the centrifuge, after which they were stored for further experiments on Earth. To avoid contamination, the work was carried out in a so-called glove box. Two months into Thomas's mission, on the 9th of September 2006, Space Shuttle Atlantis was launched on the STS-115 mission. It marked a further expansion of the space station with the installation of additional solar generators, which double the ISS electricity capacity. ESA's Columbus module will need this when it will be arriving at the ISS. Three spacewalks and the use of the robotic arm were required to secure the generators to the left side of the station make the first electrical connections, and finally, bring the solar-operated batteries up to speed. With its new solar array, the ISS is now even easier to spot from Earth in the evening sky. After six days, it was time to say goodbye for the shuttle crew.